Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, July 16th, 2018. So today, I'm going to show you how to use a brand new product by the Artistic Wire Company. This is what this bad boy looks like. This is a adjustable bangle jig. It also has the little one for the ring here as well. So, for today's project, the company actually tells you that you can use an 18 gauge wire all the way up to whatever kind of wire you want. The only thing is, I found, I actually tried their 18 gauge, uh, one tenth silver filled wire. And on its little scale, I guess you would say, this is what they would call a half hard wire so this one worked okay as far as putting it in the jig but it didn't wear as well i actually made four bangles last week and i have worn them every day all day for everything that i do and i mean that was actually um even going on a trip to an amusement park and doing all sorts of outdoor work too because i wanted to check and make sure that these would do what we wanted them to, which was stay in their shape. So I had to do a few things to kind of adjust um, to make them stay, but once I figured it out, I was in love with this tool. So I'm gonna be using today the Artistic Wire 14 gauge wire. Now this is a dead soft wire. It is a non-tarnished silver, first of all. So with wearing these, I've not had to worry about the color turning on them or turning my wrist a color because I'm really bad about certain metals um, actually turn my finger. I don't know if you can see that there. It's turned it a little bit because I have on a plated, silver plated ring today. So the cool thing is you won't have to worry about this turning. This is an actual metal wire. It's got copper on the inside, I do believe, and then your silver plate on the outside with the great artistic wire covering over it. So this is what I'm gonna be using today to make my bangle with. The only other thing really that I'm gonna be using besides the jig is I'm gonna be using my uh, anvil. If you have a bench block, that will work as well. I've got my hammer handy. I've got a pair of cutters. And the only other thing I've really found kind of essential for this are your bent nose pliers. So they just work a lot easier than your regular um, flat nose pliers. And at first I played with these with the flat nose and it just did not work out as well as the bent nose pliers did. But you are gonna be super excited today because I'm not gonna show you not one, not two, but I'm gonna show you three awesome projects. So this is the first of the three. So let me go ahead and get my wire cut. I'm gonna be using 14 inches of my 14 gauge wire. So it's gonna be really easy for you to remember if you use the 14 gauge, because it's 14 inches, 14 gauge. Okay, so go ahead and get your wire and let's get started. Okay, so when you open up your jig, well, what did I do with my jig box? I have no idea. Okay, when you open up your jig, it actually comes with really great step-by-step -step instructions on how to use it. As you can see, you have a peg here and here. These are permanently into your piece, and you have a peg here and here. These are for the ring, and these are gonna be, of course, for your bangle. So I'm gonna start out with my 14 gauge wire, and I'm gonna start on this right-hand side. It doesn't matter if you do right or left, Whichever one you start with, that's the way you're gonna keep going. So I'm gonna start here on this right-hand side. I've left myself about an inch of wire and holding the wire, I'm gonna bring it up and bend it upward in this direction around that peg. Now, we're gonna let the jig do the work for us. So we're gonna bring this wire around the jig and as you can see, I'm kind of holding the wire down as I work. This will spring up on you, so if you don't want it to spring up, make sure to hold it in place as you work. Now, when I get to my peg where I started, I'm coming to the inside of that peg, and if you see anywhere, like right here, where it kind of pushed out a little bit, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna pull this back out again, because you want this to be nice and firm up against your jig. 
Anywhere where it's not nice and firm up against your jig, you're gonna see it in the bangle itself. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to the other side. I'm gonna go in between here. And then just like I did on the first side, I'm gonna take that wire and I'm gonna bend that wire up. And get it back in here. There we go. Bend it up just like that. And if it pops off, that's okay. We can pop that bad boy back on. I like to keep it on my jig before I cut it. And the reason I do that is because I feel like I get more of a consistent cut. So I'm basically gonna cut and leave just a little bit past the little peg that I've got. And if it pops off at that point, it's okay because we have what we need. So if you look at it from the top, this is what it looks at. Look at it from the side and this is what you've got. So at this point, this is where your bent nose pliers are gonna come into play. You have a loop here, which I'm gonna call the top. And I'm going to grab a hold of this loop, and you can see here, with my bent nose pliers, I'm just grabbing right at that um, little cut here. I'm going to hold that firmly in place, and I'm going to bend this towards me. So I'm going to bend it just like that. That gives me a nice sharp bend here, you can see. And then I'm going to flip it around. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take this one here. I'm going to grab a hold of that. I'm gonna bend it in towards me to get that nice bend. Now, this is where, I swear to you, I did this video three times the other day. My brain could not wrap around it for some reason, although I had made all of these bangles. So I clip into here, and then I'm gonna push this piece down and clip it into there so that your pieces are not crossing or make an X shape. Now, if you see here where they've kind of come here in the middle, I can kind of take and bend these wires outward a little bit so it's more even and centered. Now, all you have to do is grab a hold with your bent nose pliers right here on your end, and you can kind of bend this wire downward. If you've not made or you didn't leave yourself enough loop, you can grab a hold and kind of loop it in a little bit. But I found it's just as easy just to grab a hold right there and bend that little piece in. You're not so much as bending it here as you are the outside because you still want that to be able to move. Then I'm going to come here to the inside and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to bend that little piece in so that it looks like this. So at this point, you can see that you pretty much have an oval, except for right here where I didn't get it good um, on my little piece. So you, if you have one of these curved pliers, you can use it. If not, you can put it you know, back around something to kind of give you that loop that you want. And it's pretty pliable at this point, so you can kind of just mess with it and get what you want. So at this point, it's supposed to be ready to wear. But when I wore it like this, I had to keep pushing it in. Like it would come really big and open when I wore it and I would have to kind of push it in. And I didn't like that. So this was where my uh, little anvil came in. Basically what I did is I kind of pushed these pieces in to where I would want the sizing on my, my actual wrist. And now I'm going to take my hammer and I'm going to start right here on right next to, if you see here, right where that's going to meet, I'm going to take and I would hammer this, hammer it really good, continuously just moving it until I got to this side here. So all I would be doing is just hammering this portion here, which I'm not going to do on the video because it'll be really, really loud. But what this is going to do, this is going to harden this a little bit so that it won't bend and it'll keep its shape as you Once you it. have your piece hammered, this is what it'll look like. You can see now that this is a little bit flattened, but not much. As I open and I close it, I still get a good bounce back on that. So that works out really well. Um, and you can see that this right here does not bend easily. It's pretty well hardened. So that works out really, really great. So now at this point, you would just slide it on your wrist. Got mine a little tight. But you can see it kept its shape 
and these here I have worn these all week and you can see they all have kept a really good and consistent shape to them as far as their their sizing their sizing here the whole nine yards now I do want to show you they do show you how you can actually add beads to this but I will do it and show it on the ring so that way you'll get a little bit better idea of what I'm doing so I tried the ring actually using the 18 gauge and it didn't work well so then I used this 20 gauge um, so let me cut a piece of this 20 gauge wire so I can show you how to do your little so adjustable ring. So for the ring. adjustable ring, you're basically going to start it exactly like you do the bracelet. You're going to lay it down on one of your little hooks here and you're going to bend it back towards itself. Okay. Now, you are going to bring the wire all the way around your little circular piece here. And it works just like the bangle. Okay, we're going to bring it all the way back around to the other side and then bend that wire up in this direction. And when you pop it off, it's really going to pop. Okay, there we go. Now, this is how they say if you want to add beads to this, this is where you have to do it. I would actually take now and add my beads to this side okay you don't actually have to when it's on here you can do this and kind of bend it around like this and then add your beads to it and they would slide right here to the center and then basically you mimic the same shape is all you would have to do and it's the same way for the bangle you would just mimic the shape once you have your beads on there just be aware that once you add your beads that's going to take up room on the actual ring itself and make the inside diameter of the ring smaller and um, same thing we want to trim trim our wires while they're on here and the thing about your ring is that you really don't want to leave a lot of excess so I mean I'm literally gonna cut it right at these little pegs so that this is what you have and then this is gonna work just like the bracelet we're going to turn one towards ourself, turn the other towards ourself, and then to me this is a little bit harder because you've got such a small tiny little workspace here but then this is what you've got and then at that point it's just going to be a matter of pressing your little wires down on each side. So I'll kind of go ahead and tell you, for me, for the ring, if you get it a little bit out of whack here, you can definitely straighten it back up, whole nine yards. But for me personally, the ring is going to be really good for anybody who has a small finger, especially children, um, because on me, this is like a little tiny pinky ring. Um, even though it's adjustable, you know, I can take it and I can make it bigger, but it's really hard to actually kind of get on. It doesn't adjust as well. Um, you know, and I do have a little bit of a bigger finger, but it's, it's really hard to kind of get it adjusted and to wear it good. Um, but this is, again, just using your ring jig on this adjustable so bracelet. in last week's video, a lot of you had questions about my bracelet that I'm wearing. So the bracelet is a new product that we got into the store and I was just kind of testing it out to see how I like it and I love it. It's been really, really fun to show people. We have this in a bracelet. The bracelet is two sizes, okay? The bracelet comes in a seven inch, which is gonna be really good for anybody who has like a six and three quarter wrist and smaller. The eight inch size, which I'm wearing here today, is gonna be really good for anybody who wears a seven to about a seven and a half, okay? I'm, I wear about a seven, I'm comfortable with a seven to a seven and a quarter, and um, 
I think if I had bigger than a seven and a half, I wouldn't find it as comfortable to wear. So just be aware of that. But the bracelets, the earrings, I've got some earrings. Um, and I've got some little tiny cups that I'm going to show you. But all of these use the 8 millimeter Chaton that we carry in our store. It is an SS39 Chaton, which is equivalent to an 8 millimeter. So I'm going to show you how easy these are to use. Also, um, really piggyback onto that, what I'm going to show you too are some brand new findings that we got in our store. These are little cabochon um links i guess you would call them um, these are actually the earring bindings uh cabochon cups maybe um, but basically they are made to make a quick project like a gluing cabochon so i'm going to show you these as well these are really cool because the silver ones you can get for 95 cent a pair and then it's just picking out the size stone that you want or whatever color stone you want to put in so this is going to be really quick and really simple two really great quick these projects. are some brand new products that we added to the website this week they are 18 millimeter acrylic cabochons so they have a silver backing to them and then a really really pretty front one to them this is the white AB that I have here in my hand and then I think this one is the turquoise the light turquoise I believe is this color um, but it's you see it's got a really cool texture to it but it really really sparkles the neat thing is that they fit in these little cabochon cups perfectly and they're an earring so they're already set and good to go. Um, I will tell you too, one really neat thing is I have the smaller size coming for the mermaid scales that we got in. These are the 12 millimeter mermaid scales and so just be watching on our website soon because I'll be adding these little cup uh, components in the 12 millimeter size for those of you who have fallen in love with the mermaid scales. But I'm gonna be using a little of my E6000 glue, which I had a friend the other day, she cracked me up. She's not even a beater, and um, she said that her and her husband are obsessed with E6000, said it works on everything. I said, yeah, I know, right? Um, so all you gotta do is put your little E6000 glue there in the center, push your cabochon in place, and then let it dry. And that is all you have to do to make these really quick and easy earrings. So just put your E6000 on the center again. Put your cabochon down in there. Press it. If any excess glue comes out, you know, you can surely take and wipe that off. But that is how easy these things are to make. And again, this is the 18 millimeter size cabochon cup holder. So anything that you have that has a flat back in it that is that 18 millimeter size will fit in here. And you can make this really, really quick and easy earring with it. And again, we are getting these in the 12 millimeter size for those of you who love the mermaid scales. And I'm sure my employees are gonna love me for this. Okay, so that is how simple and easy these are. And like I said, we have some really, really pretty ones of these on our website, which can be found at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. So now I wanna show you real quickly how that you can also make the bracelet that I had on in my last video. Uh, and I'm actually gonna be using, this is a new color um, cabochon that we got in. This is the, I think it's the Light Siam Shimmer. It's a really, really pretty red, but it also pulls lots of blues and yellows and pinks. So you just lay your chaton point down into its little compart compartment, hold it into place, and use your flat nose pliers. You can push down one corner, go to the opposite corner, and you will push down that corner. Then corner three and corner four. And I keep my fingers on it so that it holds it in place. And you can see how easy that was to do. Okay, so again, pop that bad boy in there, hold it in place. I'm gonna fold down corner one, come across to corner two and push that one down, corner three, and then 
corner four. One more time. And like I said, we do have this in a seven inch and an eight inch bracelet. The seven inch is gonna be really great for anybody who has a six and three quarter wrist or smaller. The eight inch bracelet is gonna be good for anybody who wears a seven to about a seven and three quarters. And also, if you will look, you want to wear this with this piece here to the inside of your wrist, like I have here. The reason they do that is because your the bone on your wrist makes this side a little bit bigger. So if you'll look, this is out a little bit further and that is to make up for the difference on that side of the wrist. So this is the bracelet. Um, I did wanna show you really quickly, we have the post earring where you can either, it's got a loop so you can dangle stuff down from that post or you can cut it off and just have a cute pair of post earrings. We have those. We have the little cups. Now the little cups themselves are really cool. They have a little hole at the top so that you can dangle it, make an earring, whatever you wanna do. It's really, really simple. Just like the bracelet, we are going to lay our chaton in, point down. And again, just like the bracelet, I'm gonna do a corner, the opposite corner, then corner three, and corner four. Okay, so really, really quick and simple on these. I have these in silver and gold. And then I also wanted to show you real quick, I also have them like this. This is actually called a Gita finding. Um, this is the triangular earrings. And I wanted to make a pair of earrings to match my bracelet. And these work exactly like the bangle and the little cups. You literally put your piece down in there, hold it in place, push down one side, the other side, and this side's a little bit trickier. To me, I kind of have to grab a hold from the side and press it down like that. So again, you kind of just, because it's in the center here, you just kind of have to press it down, uh, be really, really gentle. I found that these bent nose pliers work really well for these. Um, they also make a special tool, but honestly, unless you were just setting stones all day, like you got a new job and we're just gonna be a stone setter for the rest of your life, um, I don't know why you would really uh, want to put that extra money into a the setter. And I will show that to you um, so you can kind of see it. Um, and honestly, the reason I say that is it's just a little bit hard to work with, especially if you're using it on a pair of earrings like this. Let me grab it real quick so I can show you. Okay, so this is actually what the stone setter itself looks like. This one is made specifically for the 39 SS uh, chatons, and you can see this is what it looks like. And literally, and I'll do it on this just because it's harder to show you on something like this. Um, once you get your chaton in place, you are just going to take and press this down and it presses your four corners down. Okay, so it basically does what your flat nose pliers did. The only thing about this is it works really great for things that are on a flat surface, but when you do something like this that's not flat, it's harder to kind of get in there and do that. And so this is why I say that I just tend to like to use my, my flat nose pliers for it. Now, if you wanted to, once you got your pieces kind of tucked in, and I'll show you here. And again, because that's kind of in a funky little hole here, gotta grab it from the side and kind of tuck it in. There we go. Just wanna make sure all four corners get tucked in. So if you wanted to at that point, you could go in with this and kind of push these down 
in case you didn't get any kind of push down good. Um, but you know, it's completely up to you. But all these fun, cool new findings plus all the chatons can be found on my website. So I hope you enjoyed learning three brand new projects today. Just a great big heads up coming up on July 20th through the 22nd of 2018. We do have our Christmas in July sale coming up on our website, which is off the beaded path bead store.com. What that means for you is that if you use the coupon code HOLIDAY, you will receive 25% off of your total purchase, okay? So remember, you have to put in the coupon code HOLIDAY in the coupon code box at checkout to receive the 25% discount. And this is gonna be good for everything on our website. So that way you'll ha kind of have a heads up about that. Also, all the findings that you see today can be also found on my website. Please be sure to note that any kits or products that I talked about in today's video are sold on a temporary basis. Colors and kits are subject to change at any time. And please be advised that any promotion or sale is date specific and may not be available at the time that you watch this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next week where I'm gonna show you how to make some fun projects using patterned wire. Have a great day, bye-bye. <laughs>